This is Nova. This is Nova. And Nova hates people and is super aggressive towards people. No, not at all. She loves me. <laughs> Thank God. No. <laughs> we got her from the animal shelter about a month and a half ago. Okay. And they, I think she's a Kane Corso. I'm not 100%. Sure, yeah. Uh, but if not full, she's at least got a lot of uh, Corso in her. No, no. It's a, the vet said that uh, it's because she was in heat recent, uh, recently before she had her um, spay. She's young. We think she's probably a little over a year. How are those teeth looking? Big white. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. Just hit he. So adolescence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't think that she's had a uh, litter in the past. She's gone through about seven different households in a year. Whoa. She was surrendered by the original family that owned her. I guess they lived in East Oakland and they were very poor. And and they had two dogs. They couldn't afford the dogs, so they they turned them into the shelter. And then they had second thoughts, and they took them back. Okay. And and then they dropped them off again, and that was it. They, I guess, they kept one of the two. And one of the vets that worked for the shelter fostered her for a while. I guess she came in with bad parvo. Okay. And they were considering. Fucking rough go. Holy shit! Where does this go from here? So the vet nursed her back to health, put her back in the shelter. That was adopted by a uh, a woman who didn't know anything about dogs and of course an animal shelter somebody adopts them you send them out and this woman didn't even have a car but she took the thing home on a bus the thing just sat in her house and she didn't like that the dog barked and so she brought her back how soon did she have her a month okay and then she went to a woman who actually turned out to be our neighbor she fostered her for about six weeks and did a bunch of training with her which is why she's got some decent training and then if she had to bring her back into the shelter, then another family adopted her, and they loved her. It was a good match, but it turns out that the mom was super allergic to her. So Jesus her Christ! She went back again and saw her. She was trolling the, the puppy listings. She thought she looked cute, and then she was looking up the breed, and she thought the corsos might be good for us. You know, home to that. Where do you live? Oakland. Okay. What part of Oakland? The hills north. North. Okay. Yeah, Got it. Hills. I mean, it's a nice neighborhood, but it's still open, right? Yeah. And, uh, we got there. Turns out that she was actually scheduled to be uh, put down the next day. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you are finally her happy ending after a bunch of twists and turns. We, we want to make it a happy ending. If we could wave a magic wand today and fix two things, what would it be? She's leash reactive. wouldn't say leash aggressive because okay. she's not an aggressive dog. But she's very leash reactive. And, and she's just got lots and lots of puppy behavior, which okay. just means that she's going to outgrow. Okay. But if we're going to have another 12 years of a dog that acts that way, it's going to be a lot. Yeah, and you've had her for two months? Yeah, about a month and a half. A month and a half. So she's still assimilating, but she's also entering teenager. You know, she's had no stability her entire puppyhood. Right. So everything that you do right now is the first semblance of consistency that she's had. So the good news is that she hasn't had a lot of opportunity to rehearse consistent behaviors because her environment has changed so readily. Yeah. Plus she was sick for the first however many months of Parvo. So this is good news, this is good timing. Yeah. Had you gotten her six months beyond this point, but you might have be having to undo some things versus truly just building up from scratch. It doesn't have that nervous flinch when Most you people better. apply a narrative that a dog is that way because they're abused. Yeah. But I deal with behavior every day of my life, and mostly it comes down to over understimulation. Genetics play a huge role. Protective yeah. breeds, guard breeds, driven breeds, right. breeds bred to respond to stimuli, yeah. and the environment is happy to provide that stimuli to those breeds. Whatever is going on, most likely pretty superficial considering she's just coming out of puppyhood. Sure. What we want to do is create consistent exposure from here on to say, look, dogs are rad. People are rad, children are rad, skateboards are rad. Like just so that she can go, got it. This stuff is normal. Yeah. I shouldn't yeah. be concerned. And how has she acted with people coming into your home so far? We you know, try to tell them just to turn around and as soon as they turn around. Lure a sit to get a treat, lure a sit to get pet, create a ritual. To yeah. Continue with that because as she matures, yeah. the side could start to emerge a little bit, right? You could have a contractor come into your home and the contractor is big and boisterous and just barrels through and it creates an event. Her genetics can express from that type of thing and she can go, you know what? 
maybe I should be a little wary of people coming into the home. So what we want to do is we want to secure the introduction of people with awesomeness. She clearly loves affection, fantastic. Let's pour on food, let's pour on her listening and participating. Yep. So you want the food, sit. Yeah. Sit a couple times, every time she breaks, note back into sit, get paid. Same thing for pets, so when they pop up because you're about to pet them, sit, yeah. and you get pet when you sit. So everything happens when you do that. Yeah. And that just happens to be good manners, huh? Let's sit, can you sit? Wow. Very good. Oh, there she is. She's at the gate. Oh, great. Hello. Hi. Come, <laughs> come back with a warrant. So that, there's that guard breed. Runs, charges really fast. Bolts towards the thing. Hi. Hi. So it's Bay Area. No one's getting anywhere anytime soon. Um, nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, Josh. Yeah, nice to meet you. I got a terrier that's talking trash in, right beyond that glass uh -huh. door, and she does not care. If she was really looking to meet conflict, she would have stayed there and really given that door a good go. What we were talking about is I got up to date on her story. Okay, cool. um, here, you can sit here, Dad, and I'll take this chair. She had a rough go, she said no consistency, and so consistency and exposure is gonna be the best course of action. Okay. Um, you don't have to break any bad habits, just help her see the world in the right light. As I was telling dad here, genetics breeds play a big role in why and how a dog operates. She is a protection breed or a guard breed, and so we wanna help her understand that people coming into the home are a good thing, not a bad thing, so on and so forth, so that like I was telling dad, a lot of times I hear, especially for bull breeds or German shepherds, we were fine, they were a puppy, and then all of a sudden a contractor came by, and I've never seen them act like that. In her epigenetic inheritance, she's supposed to do these things. So what we've gotta do is write that with what I refer to as greeting rituals. So people come in, they give the good stuff, she sits for the good stuff, so it's really good etiquette. We can manage her interactions, but also get her to listen and participate and not be jumping up and excited. Nova, hi. There's Sit. an odd thing in our wow. house. She submission pees when we get up in the morning. She sleeps with our in our daughter's room. I'm usually up, and she comes downstairs. If I ignore her, she'll pee. Yeah. If I start petting her, she that's, pees. That's normal. When I come home, she pees. It's normal. It's pretty normal at, at a developmental stage. You'll uh -huh. see that a lot with puppies and adolescents, especially ones that haven't had a lot of stability. And it's more or less just an overstimulation and then submission. You see that play out too with dog-to-dog -dog interaction. You'll probably see uh, the same process when I shop her with a stranger dog. Mm -hmm. She'll probably, when the dog presses her for an interaction, flop over and probably pee. Yep. If she were a more confident and assertive dog, she would go to mounting you and jumping up on you. Mm. But still, overstimulation and temperament is the biggest precursor there. But very standard for like puppies. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Okay. You know, you want to shape it. You want to call her to you so that she's seated and taking pets. Mm -hmm. Try not to tower over her. Mm -hmm. If you can get her to come to you, if you could take a lower position and have her come to you, I'll even sit, it sounds so silly, but sit on the floor. Sure. I'm having a lot of luck with her too because I'm sitting down. Mm -hmm. Standing up can be a little intimidating, okay. but having her come to you and then petting her when she sits. So when she flops down to the ground, you can make a perky voice and say, and get her to pop back up to get pet. So she's in a seated position, there's consent, she's coming to you, everything's fine. Okay. If you fall into that, oh, it's okay, baby girl, and you go to pet her when she's on the ground, that submission position is going to perpetuate the peeing. Okay. So you want her, you want to get her off the ground and engaging with you. Okay. So she'll do anything for food. That's fantastic. So a greeting ritual. Let's say I'm a house guest and I'm like, oh my god, what a cute puppy! Sit. Very good. I'll pay for the sits. You're doing so good. Sit. Wow. I use my body. She's responding to my body. The dogs are more visual. So I'll come down, pet, and I'll wait for them to pop up. Oh, you're so cute. I'll ask for that sit. When she sits, she gets pet. Seeing this how she's an affectionate dog, just help her understand, here's how you get the pet. If she pops up, instead of ignoring, just apply communication. A lot of people yeah. say, turn around and ignore, and yeah, that's important to say, hey, yeah. this doesn't get what you, get you what you want, but you don't have to be so overt as to turn all the way around. You can just go off, sit. Now I've got off, hands are up, you're not gonna get pet, sit. This is how you get pet. 
and use your hands. It's really great that she'll tune into that stuff. We're, we're getting a tube of uh, Jif peanut butter. <laughs> we are. Choosy dogs choose Jif. I haven't been sponsored yet, and I'm pretty pissed off about it. <laughs> uh, it's just so great that they've created this. Um, there also is a smaller version of this. So you don't have to be like John Wayne, like pulling the six shooter. But uh, there's a tiny one they use that you can take on dog walks. Really great for excitable dogs. Licking activates the parasympathetic system and it's calming. You may see dogs self-soothe by licking things a lot and suckling on pillowcases and stuff like that. Sure. That's because it puts them into a calm state. So this is a really great thing to use on the dog walk to calm an excitable puppy down that has a lot of weight to her. She is fantastic. 100% embarker to see what else is in there. She's not as big as a Cane Corso. Mm -hmm. She's giving off some pity mix vibes, but her feet are so big. Honestly, bigger is better. Bigger dogs are better for high energy dogs like Border Collie. They go and go. But the bigger the dog, the more they wear out and they're more chill because they've got all that weight to push around. You probably would want her to get a little bigger. You want to pattern out that experience and that exposure. So this is a formative time. So if you were to go to a couple breweries in Oakland where there's outdoor seating and it's a smaller yes. like hipster brewery, yeah. go there first versus the Berkeley one where it's like massive and go small intimate breweries. Uh -huh. Keep her outside in case there's like a reverberation issue inside. Yeah. Go not during peak times, uh -huh. but during functional alcoholic times. Yeah. <laughs> so the sidewalk's not crazy. The brewery's not crazy and she's having a good time and you've lowered that dial and you've got something there to keep her calm, yeah. let people say hi to her, have people give treats so that you can keep those people awesome, mm -hmm. right? Let's not just assume that she's gonna love to be pet by 100 million people, right. but if people come in with treats, then there's another reason why she likes their presence. That will secure the pro-social tendencies that you're looking for. And then from there, crank it. Go a little bit bigger, go to a bigger brewery and hang out on the outside of that brewery and then bring her inside when you go to get another beer and back outside, cool. dipping your toes in the water and coming back out. And then pretty soon you got yourself a beer a brewery dog. I've been taking her to Point Isabella because I feel like she needs to socialize, she needs to be with her dogs, and I've been working with her, on top of that, I've been working her really hard not to be leash reactive to other dogs. I'll put her in a situation when I'm walking in our yeah. neighborhood where if there's a dog barking at their gate, I have her sit, I'm feeding her treats, sure. and, and she's not reacting, so sure. I'm just giving her treats, and I just have her have that experience. Sure. Cars are coming, people are walking. It's working. all exposure at this point. She's been really good. I was like, okay, we're ready for Point Isabella so she can really socialize and get out there and run around with the dog. The first three minutes. She's got crazy. Oh my gosh, jumping on people at such force. People are yelling at you? Yeah, because she was just, this lady was walking and she was just jumping on her. Oh. Just like, what? Okay. Wham. Not being aggressive. If she was a normal sized puppy, it'd be cute, right? If she was like a yeah. cavalier, it'd be like, oh my God, look at the floppy puppy. But she's yeah. not, and people are intimidated by the amount of size and muscle she's got. Yeah. But it's the same thing, it's a flailing puppy. So yeah, that makes total sense. Not ready for Point Isabel, that's fine, but we can totally graduate to that. Okay. Point is, it, dogs look at things in terms of contrast, that's it. They look at the baseline, and then there's contrast. And so a place like Point Isabel is gonna be a lot of stimulation and that's just gonna cause our system to go crazy and she's gonna get the zoomies and flail everywhere. So what we wanna do is maybe take her to a busy area but work off in the distance. So like a Alameda dog park kind of area where you can be on the beach side. You guys been to that one over there? Mm -hmm. Huge dog park in Alameda, uh, right next to the beach. Okay. A huge dog park, probably like 50,000 square feet. Is it near Crane Beach? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we actually did walk through. Didn't realize it was a dog park. Lots of room is better. So I like to find community parks that have dog parks, and I'll work in the soccer field where the dog park is in the vicinity, and I'll work the dog in and out in vicinity so they can, like, cool, duck. there's dogs here, there's people there, and then I pop them out, and I let them relax. So I call it environmental pattern games. I do the same for busy street whenever I get my clients where they had a a cattle dog and they lived in Arizona and then surprise mom took a Kaiser Permanente job in downtown San Francisco mm -hmm. and the dog is losing their shit. I'll perform the same environmental pattern games. I'll go to busy environments, but I'll map out quiet side streets and I'll put them in that busy environment, give them the game some food and I'll take them to that quiet side street so they can get out of that stimulation, shake it off, smell, decompress and back. And by doing that, I help her regulate and regulation is what we want, but you can't effectively regulate if you stay in that environment, it's like standing in a mosh pit and trying to regulate. So you want to come out and go back in. So that we'll, I'll show you how to do that okay. pretty easy. 
So I did that. I was so flustered and I was just shaking. I had my little dog and my little dog wrapped herself around. She, and she took a tumble. And I took a tumble. Yeah. And it was just one of those three minutes of sheer hell. So I managed to grab the little dog and her and I took them off to the side and there's these bike paths that run along. And so I took her off to the side. I yelled at her. Yeah. Controllably. Yeah. Did you call her any names? Obscenities. Oh, yeah, you cut. I lost my voice. You go hard. <laughs> oh my god! I was like losing it. My voice got hoarse. Yeah, I yeah, talk yeah. I was like, okay. So I closed myself. I got my special. I had hot dogs. Yeah. Show her the hot dogs again. Walk with her. Calm her down. And then I took a deep breath. I walked back yeah. in there, and she was okay. Yeah. We had some moments where she didn't come back, and I was like, oh no, now what? Should yeah. I just leave her and run? Hey, like, eighth home here. and counting. I don't know what happened to the dog. Oh, you know? it's so crazy. Yeah, anyway, we're going back to the pound. The moment that you had where you got flustered and you weren't yourself and you were like, mother, and you were just not there, not present, and yelling obscenities is the moment she had when you pulled up to the spot. It's the same. Like the system's kicked in, right? It's the sympathetic system. It's yeah. fight or flight. It's not the frontal lobes. It makes total sense, but we want to set her up for success and look at environments as a means of helping her out. To do that, we have to set her up for success and go to chill environments. If you were to drop her off for me to work for a month, you're paying me $5,600 to make sure she's like bomb-proof in all these different areas. And so I'm going to try to find the area where we can start making some momentum, and then I'll start cranking it and going to slightly busier environments. And now I can be at Point Isabel, but by then I've just taken that dial and slowly cranked it over the course of 30 days versus Point Isabel! I got married there, by the way. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, that's where we oh, got married. That, it was the first date that I ever took my wife. And she saw sunset and she cried. She wasn't the type to go out and see the sunsets and the, the nature. And so that's where we got married. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So what we're going to do today is we want to see what's up with the doggy doggy excitability and get her a little bit more accustomed to dogs, make sure there's no unhealthy drivers in there. Perfectly normal for her to be overstimulated and puppyish and all over the place. But we just want to make sure there's nothing else there like conflict aggression or fear-based issues, just things that we should really take a hard left for to fix versus standard greeting rituals and exposure work. You know the great thing? When we did take it to Point Isabel the first time and she was just like wilding, yeah. she never, she didn't attack another dog. And uh, some dogs showed aggression towards her mm -hmm. and she wasn't interested. Most dogs will uh, correct a puppy. What we're supposed to do is put dogs with social neutral dogs, teach so that dog can say, hey, don't come in hot. Don't lick me incessantly in my lips. Don't mount me. All the things that puppies do when they don't understand how to be, the dog will correct, but then also show them this is what we do. We play invitate, we play paw, we play bark. We be mindful of each other's space. We'll get into that. I'll show her some, we'll do some greeting rituals and I'll let her hang out with mama dog. Boo will correct those behaviors in a way that won't hurt her, but teach her that's not how we do things. Here's how we do things. I'm, I'm heading up to Tahoe for the weekend. Yeah. And I want to let her off leash, like hiking and stuff. Do you recommend or there's- I would, I would go with a flexi first cause she's still a puppy. Okay. So she could get puppy brain and take off. But you can grab one of those flexies right there, and that's uh, 26 feet. One of these. Things. What I like to do is I get a long vest. If you went on Amazon today, you could get a one tiger's vest and get it overnighted to you. Okay. But these long vests, they have a D-ring here and a D-ring here. Uh -huh. And so what I'll do is I'll feed a flexi through the bottom D-ring up her spine to that one. Yep. So she can run around and twist and turn, and she never gets snagged on her legs. Okay. It's a wonderful hike because there's no snag and you just keep going. No snag, no drag. Uh, damn, that's a good slogan for Flexi. So that's what I do for a really peaceful hike, but then also you work on your recall with a safety management there, right? Okay. So she gets out there, she's frolicking in the bushes, right? Nova, come! And we practice that solid recall, so we feel like we got it. We see some dogs, we practice. Nova, come! Cool, she recalls around dogs. We see some hikers, we're excited about hikers. Nova, come! Cool, she can do it. Yep. Then you can start to have some freedom and peace of mind, put her on a GPS and you could, have a trainer do an e-call or two if you felt like you just you did not want to lose her. There's just all those other different ways you could go about it. What's the dog vest here? One tigress, spelt out one, and then tigress. They look super official too, so a lot of people give her space because they look like military vests. Yeah, oh, cool. you can put bumper slogans on there, little Velcro patches that say, 
Yeah, I do a lot of that stuff. I'll say ask to be pet, and especially for a puppy, yeah. you put two bumper patches that say ask to be pet, instead of people coming in and teaching your dog poor habits and being excited, especially in a brewery where you're gonna have a bunch of drunk people, they read that and go, oh, can I say hi to your dog? Cool, here, give him a treat and let him say, uh, have her sit yeah. to say hi. And so now all these obnoxious people are doing the right things and per participating with your greeting ritual. So giving her treats and having her sit, you go to a brewery and 30 people do that, that dog learns a hell, like just automatically starts sitting for everybody off of one session. For one, that one. Is there a D-ring on the bottom of that too? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So now you run that Flexi and you'll get an XL Classic Flexi as well from Amazon. 26 feet and then you're good to go. All right. Are you ready to pull some dogs out? Here we go. First and foremost, because it's nice and cool today, I'm gonna to see if she's a little drivier than normal. Huh? Swim lessons? Yeah. <laughs> so I am seeing a little bit of prey, not play. So this is prey. She's coming after it like it's dinner. Really tense, not frolicking like a puppy. Looking less like a puppy when she's pursuing this, isn't she? Yeah. Stiff fur missling is a prey mechanism, not a play mechanism. But that's okay. Uh, this is a dog trainer's toy. Sit down. Do you know down? She does. Down. Wow, get it. Go to Redline Canine and get both of them. There's one called a puppy uh, flirt pole and this one's called a rabbit. And it's got the fake skin on it. Okay. Head on a swivel, T2000. Yeah, she's got a little, she's a little gas in the tank. She's the corso or the pity side is definitely coming out. Oh, sit. Heel. Sit. Down. Get it. So this is what the animal's meant to do. We forget that after 15,000 years of domestication, they're still animals, especially the, dri the uh, drivey breeds, working breeds still have that animalistic quality. We just took components of the kill trait and we re-engineered it to do shit for us. Guard breed, right? Protect the home, go crazy if somebody jumps a fence. Protection breed, protect around me, mobile defense. Herding breeds, pursue things but don't dispatch it. Hounds, track it but don't pursue it and don't dispatch it. So every element of what a dog does for us as a job is a component of the kill trait, right? And the area of the brain that's activated right now is the hypothalamus circuit and the limbic system. What I'm testing for is whether or not the frontal lobe can stay online because a lot of bull breeds aren't so great at that because a lot of what they were bred to do was kill the thing, dispatch the thing, rat baiting, bear baiting, bull baiting. There was no human involvement there. It's do your best animal thing to this thing, right? And so, a lot of them have threshold sensitivities, but with a little bit of practice, we can keep that brain online. So we're gonna see if she can out this. Loves to bite. Oof. Out. Okay, takes treats for it. Sit. Over here, sweetheart. It's still in my hand. Come, sit. Down. Down. Ready? You've been saying drop. Drop! Drop! Out! Good. Trade for the treat. Sit. Come. Sit. You gotta chew it, girl. You gotta chew it. Come. 
sit, heel, spin, sit, down, down, ah, down, ah, down, good, ready, get it. So as cranked as she can be, I want control there. There's no sense in cranking her and having her chase something like it's dinner unless I add some control and practice the game, the obedience, the listening, the capping, the calming, sit. Down. Down. Ah. Down. Ah. Down. Ah. Down. Good. Get it. Likes to bite. Loves the sensation of biting. Bite, bite, bite. Snap, snap, snap. Not so much dispatching. Some dogs like to shake and dispatch. She loves the bite. It's her favorite thing so far. And it's subject to change. Uh -huh. Out. This, I have her unbroken focus. Heel, spin, heel, spin, heel, spin. Good, place. Good, down, down, all the way, down. Good, get it. And I can literally lure her into virtually anything. And it's her favorite thing, and it empties her gas tank, and you get a lot of stuff accomplished. She can do anything, sits, downs, plays, stay. She'll literally do everything you want for this. Yeah. And she goes into a nice little coma for the rest of the day, right? But you have to practice the mental piece to it. You can't just have her crank and chase something, right? You gotta put the control on there. She's like a car. Clearly she's got gas, but we need to practice the power steering, the brake, and the park. Out. Good. Sit. Good. So not so drivey that she's not taking treats, which is great. Uh-uh. So she wants to jump for it. Uh. We're gonna teach her not to do that, just with communication. Uh. Sit. Down. Get it. Toro. 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 Hear that snap? That's what you want to hear. It makes it a good game. Good stuff. Very good. Didn't even see the treat there. Out on cue. Fantastic. This is like my favorite thing to do. Smart. You definitely want to create a little bit more of a buffer and a little bit more safety. So this kind of flirt pole is a little bit more safe because she's far away for the stuff like that. Sit. Down. Down. Get it. Don't do the flirt pull until you bring her back. Let me smooth out some of these SeaWorld tricks she's got going on. I wanna make sure she understands the game, knows when to go, when knows when not to go. Keeps her butt and her paws on the ground. Cause she's definitely got a little bit of drive to her. She went from puppy to serious. <clears throat> go. 
It's one of the reasons I do that. I want to know if there is a little drive in there because that will present in different places of your life, right? That kind of hypervigilance you're talking about on the walk. She could be like scanning for cats and squirrels or whatever. We don't know her history. Maybe she was a backyard dog in Oakland and so all she had going on was chasing things. So you really want to know if the dog does have drive, but also arousal. The difference between drive and arousal is a focal point. So if it's just wah, like she was at Point Isabel, that's arousal. That was drive. There was a determination there and there was a goal in mind and all of her effort was towards that goal. So the more we train her in drive and teach her to think, the less arousal we have. She's all ears when she goes fast. So I'm gonna bring her down a little bit. Maybe get some fresh water. And if she sleeps well, that's what wears her out. When you go to crank her like that and get that high intensity stuff going, you're only making a better athlete. Every day she's gonna be like, what's up? Let's go harder, let's go longer, let's go faster. We really wanna emphasize how do you get to the toy and then working through it with a lot of mental stimulation, especially when you get into place work, like the discipline stuff, like downstays and impulse control. She maintains a position. That's the type of stuff that'll put her into a nice little doggy coma. Yeah. Good, good, good. Very good. Very good. I'm surprised you hadn't got a couple of clips. Oh, with, I, I was gonna say she's. So then you're not scared of a little tug work with a dog oh, no, like this. It's great. Yeah, it's okay to play tug of war with her. So your wife is about that life, is what we're saying. Yeah. That's good. Then you're the right owner for this dog, right? There you go. No fear. Where did you meet her? <laughs> I've been bit by her a couple of times. Uh-huh. Maybe it's the wrong dog for you. Maybe we should get you like a Belgian Malinois. Something a little bit higher I've been speed. I've by her, you know, giving her a treat. Constantly telling her gentle. Gentle. gentle feed her with a, fa a saucer, gentle, not a yeah. pincher. But sometimes I forget. Yeah. I'm too quick. Yep. And she grabs my finger. And then I'll go, ah! And she'll go, ah! Yeah. And she'll just freak out that she bit me. So that what I'm doing in that is uh, I'm putting in a nice little like pause, okay. right? That position, that down position, it's difficult for a dog to do when they're super adrenalized, but it puts their chest to the ground and gives them a second to calm down. And then I can come into asking them to do other stuff that they need to pay attention for. So it's really important to build a calm into your sequence, no matter how cranked it is. It has to go to calm because the work is listen to me no matter how excited you are so that you can get in all that impulse control. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying, I mean, I really want to keep her. <laughs> I've just been reading, just watching a little bit of YouTube videos, and I'm taking everyone. Who are you watching on YouTube? Zach George? No. American this Standard? Guy, I don't know what his name is. The English guy. He has two chronic, this other guy has two chronic horses. Short guy, crew, crew cut? I want to say yes. Yeah. And then he has two male ones that are huge. Thor? The American Standard? Garrett Wing? No? Short guy, kind of pudgy. No, 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 no. no. Cracks the no, lead. This guy has like a body type of music. Oh. He's, strong. He's always wearing black. He's got two black kind of horses. Which I was like, I started doing the rope thing with her. And she's been really good about that. That's good. I'm surprised because that was a little bit more than I anticipated. So that's really good. Had you not done rope and I pulled out the flirt pole, I would have looked at you and said, don't play tug with her yet because everything is here and her jaws are there. We got to get her targeting right. She's still a puppy. We want to work into a place where she can listen. She knows that she cannot lunge for things until we place her in a reward and release position like down. Yeah. Then she only goes for it when we tell her to so that there's no misfires. So I'm, I take a position, get it. And she comes onto the tug and only then so that you don't accidentally get bit. Typically if you get bit, it's because 
you're moving, she's moving, etc. Yeah, exactly. But it should all be like a putt course, quiet on the field. And I'll even psych them out and put myself in that posture. And if Simon didn't say, uh, they understand everything's got to be exactly right. You have to hear me give the cue. You cannot lunge before then. With that, you can always bet that you're not going to have any accidents because there's a lot of control involved. Okay. But it does take some time to get there. So the fact that you're already tugging is great. What I'm hearing is you really got to get her uh, exuberance, her overstimulation. You got to get her walking right on the walk. Yeah. I want her not to be... She can do really good um, on the walk. She'll walk right next to you without tugging too much. But once she gets distracted, it's hard to rein her back. Have you tried letting her smell and throwing some yes. treats into the bush yes. and getting her to scent, but teaching her like, don't pull me, but have fun. Go smell, go sniff so that you can get her from scanning the environment to nose to the ground and focusing yeah. on scent, like pheromones. Yeah. I tell her, you know, I go, let go, bravo, bravo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Bravo. And then she goes around and okay. she smells, and she okay. smells, she smells. I bring her back in, I make her sit, I Perfect. Her lie down. Super intuitive. Okay, now we have to focus on me. So when she's walking and I see that she's all of a sudden walking, I go, where's Nova? Nova here, Nova here. And then she starts looking at me again. Got it. And I want her to keep the attention on me and not on the surrounding area. Well, so there's a give and take there. You want her to you want her to catalog the environment because she's still a puppy. Yeah. And the only way she's going to be like, all right, got it, buses, children, birds, is that she watches it, check, nothing bad happened, right? Scary bus, loud noise, nothing bad happened. Now on me, pay attention to me and listen to me in public. Mm -hmm. But then there's this funny thing that happens where when you release her to go back to exposure work and listening and looking, you've effectively turned the environment into a, a reward. Okay. And she gets to go back to being a dog. And because she thinks the environment is a reward, now it's a reward pathway. So now you've got a lot of control on me, listen to me, now go be a dog. It's so important because, like I said before, the exposure to the environment is gonna be the only thing that wears her out on the dog walk. If it's all on me, look at me, stay in a structured heel, there's no point in going. Don't even walk her throw a ball in the backyard because there's no mental stimulation going on. There's no long, slow distances. There's no cardiovascular benefit. Matter of fact, if I were to open that gate and just let her go, or had you let her go at Point Isabel, mm -hmm. she would have walked for 15 hours, no problem. So there's no benefit to it yeah. other than olfactory sense and scenting. But we'll pay close attention to what she likes to do on the walk. Okay. We definitely don't want her like T2000 on the walk. We want to put her nose to the ground and on me game oriented. Okay. Do you ever hear like the sound, like when you're, she's watching the children, do you hear like... I notice that she's very intent. Little kids will be getting in their car in a neighborhood where there's no sidewalks. Sure. Like people come out of their houses and they're getting in their cars. And it's not so much adults, but it's kids. Uh, it might just be intrigue, but we want to search that out. When you come back, come back on the weekend, like a Sunday. Okay. And I'll pull out all the kids and we'll see what's going on. Is it intrigue? Is it curiosity? Sometimes there's a nurturing instinct. Sometimes they will imprint on the kid and want to bathe them all day. So we just really need to search that out. Okay. But your intuition is correct. Fixation for extended periods of time, alert, watching, not good. Not good. Bring her back so that I can put, I got babies, we got all of it. Anything you want. <laughs> we stay fertile here so that we can keep kids in the program. Without kids, I got no way to test for kids. Exactly. <laughs> so we got teenagers and skateboards, everything. Are you ready to do this? Nova, you're gonna be all right, I'm gonna put her on this. You may also want a leash like this. Uh, that's a martingale. Okay. So you see how there's a, a cinching contraption on it, so you yeah. got total leverage. So if she were to say, F that kid, and the kid runs up to her, you can actually control her. Better than this thing? I don't oh know. yeah, I don't... she's too powerful. But this has total control, and you can hold her, and she's not gonna dislocate your shoulder versus Is that. that a good brand? That's Little Howler. I'll show something I can get on. Yeah, there's this one and then there's a two inch one. You could go for Alpine Dog Co. It's even wider. The wider, the better. So comfort and control is the best of both worlds. Yep. The wider it is, the more pressure disbursement. Mm -hmm. So this is actually more comfortable than that flat collar. So when that flat collar does its job and you pull up on it, it's only blunt force pressure at the front of the neck. It doesn't disperse the pressure. Yeah. So when you have a martingale, and you do the same thing, it pulls, it collapses around the neck, so it disperses around 70% of the neck. Mm -hmm. So you get leverage and it's a little bit more comfortable. Okay. And then okay. if it's Jesus take the wheel, you can control her. Okay. But I would go Alpine Dog Co. if I were you, and go two inch Martingale. Oh, that's a tactical collar. You should see it, you're fast with it, holy shit. Mm -hmm.
Martin Gale over here. Tooch Martin Gale. There we are. Those are it. Cool. Yeah. Great. So that will do the same thing. The only difference is this is a chain martingale. Sometimes I like it for sound sensitive dogs. I can jiggle the chain and it's right behind their ear mm -hmm. and it's super compelling for, come. All right, you ready? All right, let's bring out some dogs and see what's going on. I'm gonna have you go through that fence, just on that fence. And then I'll bring out a helper dog. He's pretty fast with it. Are you yeah, it's like my wife. We look at like a distribution center. I swear to you. Back up, not you. Boo, come. Time to work. Juju, can you chill out, man? Come on, get over here. Your time will come. Here, come hang out. Come hang out. Go. Uh, eat some of the baby snacks that she got. Not yet. Is the mic okay? <laughs> well, after ten. <laughs> no, she said he was built. Will is a husky fellow. As a canine behaviorist. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Probably J Jack. <laughs> All right. All right, seize the dog. Head lowered, stiff. Not exuberant puppy. Potential threat assessment, watching the dog's body language. But stiff, waiting for her to do something. Doesn't understand her posture and the laying down. Going in hot. That's what I mean by the martingale. Mm -hmm. See that? But poor etiquette, running in way too high. Boo's wagging her tail, so now the puppy's starting to get excited, but that doesn't look good. That mirroring, where she mirrored her, that can be a prey thing, a pursuit thing, okay. which does not lead to good things. Submissive, puppy licking. Gonna probably explode from here and be super puppy. Super hesitant, licking of the ears, head tall over Boo's head. Nervous, slow lick, mixture of emotions. Really unsure. Doesn't know how to be. Staying freezing and appeasing. Activated by her movement. The only pressure point I would be concerned with is a dynamic dog. I think she would chase that thing down and scare it. But when things are slower and, and more tempered, her hesitation, her insecurity shows a lot more. 
You gotta be really careful. Dogs are like, what's up? And just take off. The same dog that manifested on the flirt pole where it would be pursuit immediately. And the reason I know that is because the only time that Boo dodged to the side, she mirrored it instinctually. There was no thought associated with it. She could be in a little bit of a drive state because I just had her out with a flirt pole. I did try to decompress her with uh, peanut butter. Um, so she could be a little tense overall because of that. Yeah. Um, but still, what we want to see is that she loosens up, right? And we also want to see if she's actually interested in dogs. So she went over there, she licked, she's watching. What she looks at is what she's thinking. It's very easy to determine what a dog is thinking. Yes. When was she spayed? We don't know. We don't know. I get a guess. Her incisions all healed up? Oh yeah, yeah. fully. Yeah. She was in the shelter system? Shelter system. Yeah. She left the shelter system at what age? The first owner, I don't know if the owner spayed them or spayed her. It's California right? law. Is it? Yeah, they so have to spade was, them. Oh, no, she kidding. was, she was surrendered. Then the people who surrendered her picked her up again, took her back, then got, got Parvo, took her back. And they were like, she's sick, we can't even have any money for her. And then the vet at the shelter took her, right? Yeah. I think that's the vet. Yeah, adopted her. So she had to be spayed when that first adopter got her. Then, uh, you can then see her incision scar, and actually they used the surgical marking pen. Yeah. And they closed it, and you can see she's got like a blue line. It's like, okay, like so pretty skin. fresh, yeah. And then she was put into foster, then someone adopted her, brought her back, and then someone adopted her again and brought her back, and then it's us. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Super rough. The last we wanted to be your last yeah, dog. We really do work. She's probably not going to grow. Her, her feet are so big. I think she didn't receive the full physiological package being spayed that early. So that does affect things like size, bone density, drive, etc. Okay. So just keep that in mind and definitely talk to your vet about some bone supplements to make sure that she gets her bone density because her feet are so big comparative to her height. Yeah. So I think she was going to be a little bit taller. She has allergies. In this market, full beef diet? Yes. Oh my God. Like Eating better than me. I have to eat pork. I I'm know. still looking at the steaks like, when is it on sale? Cooking. Talk to your vet about the right, maybe the right diet. Say you're concerned. You want to make sure she's supported if her growth was stunted. I can't consult you on food, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I'm sure the vet could help you out okay. and talk to you about that. Thank God. Is there our vet is a friend of ours too. So. What what vet is it? She's in Walnut Creek. Okay. VCA. All right. Let's go ahead and take her. She's not super hypersocial like I thought, and I may have emptied her tank on the flirt pole. We're gonna bring out a second dog, okay. and see what happens. This dog is gonna be less friendly. She is friendly. She just doesn't look it. She stares a lot. So for conflict-seeking dogs, that's gonna put them off. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think she's. <laughs> <laughs> You ready? You look ready. Come on. So this is Gigi, the bell of the ball. It picks up all of the scent, milk, the, the mouth, the ears, the butt, the genital areas are all rich areas to smell and identify the pheromones. There can also be other pheromones, if, especially if they're long-eared dogs. They're like hounds and stuff. Their ears will drag and catch more scent. Sometimes I, I am of the mind that a lot of times, especially when I watch dogs interact with my dogs, 
that they're not only smelling that dog, but they can smell all the other dogs on that dog. Like when you come home and you pet a dog, your dog's like, Judas, <laughs> right? Big into ear. Yeah. I had a dog lick, pull the lip up so that they could smell the lip yesterday. It was so strange. Hi, Mama. Hi, sweetheart. All right, here we go. Okay, new dog. Pattern exposure coming in the same trajectory. Everything looks the same. Sees the dog. Stop shy. Checking in for those treats. Choosing the treats over the dog. Doesn't know how to read that dog. That dog doesn't look friendly. The minds are business. She can read social cues, okay. pro-social cues versus not, which is pretty good. Do you want a treat? That's it. Let's see about resource guarding. Come on. Looking back at me, looking for those treats. See if we'll get some faint side eyes. Go say hi. Go say hi. The stuff that I'm using is doggy. It's the treat that most dogs lose their mind over. What is it? Zeewee Peak. It's a company out in New Zealand. And it's all fresh ingredients, air dried, like beef, lamb. She's eating the lamb, she really likes it. But a lot of dogs like it. And a lot of dogs will start choosing that treat versus other dogs. What's even the, A Zeewee Peak. Zeewee, if you go to Zeewee Pet, dot usa and you get the lamb the air dried lamb if you put in code k9 optima 20 they're a partner of mine i started talking about them on social media and they gave me a discount code yeah but get a bag over 50 bucks so you get the free shipping and the 20 percent off okay yeah but and they're great what was the uh the discount code again k9 optima 20. She's my heart dog though, so if I lose her, <laughs> let her move and groove. Come sit. Have her walk over and then don't say anything and let her make decisions. Stop right there. Cordial, sniffing. And pretty oblivious. Go ahead and walk her out. Go. Cool. So most likely overstimulated by commotion and by the environment more so than dog. That's probably it. Hypersocial dogs are like, what's up? And they lose their mind. They're so excited. They lose control. But then overstimulated dogs is more like the environment is the exciting thing, the antecedent conditions. We've been taking her to a Bravo Pup uh -huh. in Oakland. We have three or four group training sessions. Yeah. And she lost her mind. Like Stimul it's the environment. Yeah. One on one, she's pretty chill. Yeah. But I also emptied out her tank a little bit, mm -hmm. got her listening to me, became important. And that sets a theme that will play into those environments because now I got the microphone. But there's a way to help her out with those environments. Yeah. Maybe I'll show up one day. I'll take her to that class. We'll see how it goes. Today's right. my last class. You did teach me. Like, taught some basics, yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I got her a sit. Group today. is difficult. A group for puppies is super difficult. It's counterintuitive to what you need, which is a quiet space to keep them engaged and listening so they can think and get the reps in. Yeah. So group, peel back. If you can go to a corner and get some stuff done, that's the best that's way to, kind of yeah. Bit, um, yeah, separate. you got excommunicated. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's yeah. a troublemaker. She was sure. a troublemaker. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, okay, but if I'm gonna have this kind of dog, we need her to be around other dogs because there's so many dogs in our neighborhood. Yeah, it's just the environment. That's it. Let's like, go ahead and bring out some yappy dogs and see how that goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we've got everything. Go ahead and take her through that fence. Up. Yeah, I'm going to bring out a yappy dog. I also want to see if she's got predatory drift with the way that she went for that flirt pole.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're loose in the neighborhood most of the time, huh? Nova. Okay, yappy dog. We're getting a little stimulated. Moving quicker. Face, mirroring her, you see that? That's pursuit. Yeah, not good. Nova, come. Yeah, sit. Very good. This is not the ball. Oh, God. Okay, come on, let's go. You can get her back. You can talk to her. Don't chase the dog down over here, right? Communicate to her. She's definitely interested in pursuit. Pursuit of the ball, pursuit of the flirt pole, pursuit of the lure, but also pursuit of running anything. Cats, squirrels, dogs. So we wanna teach her and train her like not to and listen to us, etc. Juju, watch. So I'm gonna cue Juju. Let's go, mama, watch. Are you eating a dead lizard? That's gross. That's super gross. Juju, let's go, watch. Come on, come on, let's go, watch. Come on, lady, clock in. Off. My Juju's broke. Juju, watch. Watch. Yo, Juju, watch. Let's go. Come on. Watch. Okay, you're fired. You guys want a dog? You're not working. You're not here. Come on. Sit. We already have a little one. Frida's about that side. Off. Sit. Off. 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 Impulse control. Down. Down. Off. What does it sound like when I say wrong answer? And the more she does it, the faster she starts to realize off that that doesn't get to the ball. That's it. Down, 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 all the way. Good, get it. Goodness gracious. She is full on eating a lizard. <clears throat> Juju, watch. Here she comes. Good girl, watch. Watch. Okay, come. Sit. Come. Sit. Come. Sit. Come. Sit. Get it. All right. Let's bring out real conflict. She can keep that ball for now.
Come. Boy. Go. Come here, Waffles. Let me put you in this one. I like this one better. Let me get you on this one. Look, I got a better call. Come here. Let me see. Come on. There you go. Much better. Okay. Back up. Take five. Hey. Take five. You're an honor roll student. Good job. Come on, let's go. All right. Go ball to that Bravo pup, whatever the hell they're called. You would have been the only person in the room and you would have worked off that ball and gotten anything you want to get accomplished. So it really shows you, sometimes it comes down to the right reward. Hey, hey, knock it off. Knock it off, go lay down. Because you know, the instructor was like offering a bully stick, which we did. And, and then I, you know, we brought like a Kong and I stuck the bully stick in there and like all kinds of stuff. Sit. And she was like freaking out, barking, trying to chew her bully stick, trying to lunge mm -hmm. at the other dog. Off. Was... That's the difference between drive and arousal. Yeah. Sit. Like, her senses were good. Oh, Off. Sit. Also. Off. Sit. Off. Sit. Off. Sit. Off. Sit. Off. 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 Down. Yeah. 
down. All the way. Let's go. Down. Down. Good. Ready? Get it. Yeah. Just gonna get reps in and help her out with the excitement, put a little impulse control in there, help her understand you do this, you get it, right? It's like the public school system. It starts off kindergarten, it starts off a lot of games, a lot of fun, like the flirt pole. And then we graduated first grade where we're writing our name 10 times. Second grade, we're a little bit of adding and subtracting. And then third grade, Pretty soon there's less recess and more classroom. And that's how the training plan evolves. It is fun and you are trying to let the puppy be a puppy, putting a lot of recess time in there to make sure it's engaging and fun so the dog loves it. But then slowly but surely we start asking for more things. And before you know it, they're working for 10 minutes before they get the ball once. But it's gradual. But she's great. I need you back because if you're gonna harness the sword in the stone by the power of gray skull and bring in the ball or whatever you're going to use tug foot pole i got to get this sea world trick thing out of the way so she does not jump or lunge for it at all i want you to come back for another session she learns in that session she does not lunge there's no misfires she knows to get to the ball it has to be through this position only when i release her we spend a session doing that and then you're good to go you can work it and then you can i mean anything you want to get accomplished sky's the limit with that kind of determination but with great power comes great responsibility. We got to make sure we put the safety component on it. Because yeah. her biting you on accident is not fun, right? She could break a finger on accident, right? Oh, yeah, she yeah, could. yeah. Oh, she could. Ready to see what else is in there? She's got a little bit of drive. You could see the pit bull when you were a lot in her just right now. Yeah. Like now that I'm sitting back, like, that's a definitely a pit bull reaction. There's a, pity, there's a pittiness yeah. to it. It's California package. You can't have any dog without a little bit of pit in there. And this is an Oakland special. Actually, before Malinois became really popular in Oakland, it was the Connie Corsos and the pit mixes that were everywhere. And then John Wick came out and everybody bought Malinois and backyard breeding. I think she's great. A little bit of excitement, yes. Overstimulation, yes. But... You know, you have, you, there's an easy solve here. We just gotta take the thing that she loves and we accomplish all the stuff that we don't love, right? Hi, did you want a treat? Did you want a treat? Come here, come over. Come on. And she's super loving. She's so loving. Yeah. But she's good with our Frenchie, so that's been... Really good, be careful with that. Is a oh, Frenchie like, is oh, it like, is it a fuck around find out Frenchie? Like, ah, 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 any of those? No, 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 no. She's chill? Not, not really. You got the chill one? It's she's either chill, chill or... She's, she's also, she's dominant. She's okay. very dominant, she's yeah. very fired up. What does that mean? She's, she's, when she's fired up, she's fired up. But when, most of the part, she's chill. Is she, she is, charging at all? No. She, Even in she'll play? She'll tell him or her if, uh, if she doesn't like the behavior, she'll growl and snap and she backs off. I'm constantly telling her gentle, 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 gentle. And she listens. And she's, one but, she lies down Yeah. and like tries to like bite her as she's lying down. Yeah, it's, that's good. It is, very, I mean, it is very, a concern. We, we don't good. want anything to happen to our friends. You've got to be careful with that stuff. I, I one, 90% of the time that there's dog fighting in the home, oh, it's yeah. typically a small dog that was trying to bring the funk, and then the bigger dog at some point just said, what? She's a closer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got to be careful with that, even though it's working itself out. Yeah. And the friend she's trying to advocate for boundaries, most likely, you got to advocate for that Frenchie so the Frenchie doesn't advocate because the Frenchie especially will get into a, they'll just start doing it more and more and more and now the charging and all that stuff. So what you need to do is advocate for boundaries, call Nova off when Nova's being too much, put I Nova in some positions. We've been doing that yeah. so far, but you know, at some point we're going to leave them alone in the house, right? I mean, I'm, right now she's in a crate. Do they play a lot? What's that? Do they play? No, they don't Frenchie's play. not playful? She, she, they want to be. And there's times where, where Frida, Frida, the Frenchie, Frida wants to play with her and she gets all spunky and she just she tries. Like yeah, yeah. She starts to bat at her. Yeah. And then Nova gets so excited. Can you film that for me and text yeah. me? I need to see all that stuff. I just want to make sure that I can see everything and look for healthy versus yeah. unhealthy. Just to see stuff down the road. And then I'm like, and then I get worried because one swipe, I mean. I What you really have to worry about is a misunderstanding because I don't perceive Nova as entirely pro-social comparative to a lot of the other puppies that might be like dog is life. But with Nova, it's ball is life, uh, people are life. 
So the, the priority there is good for, frankly, all the stuff that you brought her to me for. Mm -hmm. It's like such an easy solve. But where it becomes a problem is they're not so pro-social, so there's there a lot of room for misunderstanding. A really social doll like Boo, like Waffles can do a bunch of stuff, be too much, bite her on the neck, do all these things that would probably start a dog fight. But because Boo is so incredibly social and wants to play, she just tolerates it. If you crank the dolls down on sociability, that's where you get more skirmishes. And then all it takes, especially for bull breeds, is one or a couple of skirmishes. Now there's conflict in the relationship. And if there wasn't play in the relationship, now they're tolerating each other and now there's conflict and then you got a real problem. So of the pressure points that I see today off the first session, predatory stuff, we gotta work that. Arousal, we gotta work that. And then I really wanna make sure that we put these two uh, in the best place possible. So send me all your question mark situations where they're playing or engaging. Okay. Just film it, let me watch it so I can break it down and see what I see. But watch out for resource guarding. Do not let a to herb toys around oh, with yes. other dogs. I guarantee you that ball, if a dog were to come up, even though she's a puppy, she would start formulating, I don't like this. You would see insecurity. And then there's an eventuality to don't touch my stuff. And then from there it can crank to, no, seriously, don't touch my stuff. What dictates resource guarding is possession, the value of the item, and just a dash of insecurity that something's gonna take it away. And we already know that this is insanely valuable to her. So it's a breeding ground for resource guarding. So we gotta be really careful with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I noticed she did a resource guarding with her bowl because mm -hmm. she was just wolfing it down her food so fast that it was coming. So I got her one slow of those feeder. slow feeder. And she was at her slow feeder. And I usually separate them completely when they're eating. Glass door in between. Yeah, shut door, good, good. Yeah. Different rooms, doors are shut. Somehow the door, somebody walked out and didn't close the door. I think it was my daughter. And then Frida got out. And I just happened to be there. Corner of my eye. I saw Frida. I saw her. Oh, and I yeah. Like, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Bad. Send Frida in the house. Made no lie down. And like, be careful with that because like, the gra that. the growling you don't want to if there's a, a skirmish like that pet character right there will dissuade potentially a skirmish and dispatch like dogs that are that are like contentious but you got to be careful with punishment around growls because growl is your only prediction to something's about to occur so if you say bah! don't do that and the dog goes don't growl and dog still feels that way so instead of growling the dog is just sparred up and looking at the dog and waiting for the dog to come close because mom said don't growl. So you don't want to remove your only warning signs. Okay. What you want to do is communicate in that moment, I need you to go lay down. There's a lot of stuff that's important in training, right? It's not paws and spins and twirls. It's go there, come here, walk with me, leave it alone, right? That's, those are the really components. So like as much as recall is so important for your hike, go there and play send is the opposite of inside. Stop what you're doing and go lay down is a godsend, for, especially for big puppies getting into mischief or making the wrong choice. Stop what you're doing, go lay down. And it also doesn't, there's no, there's no punishment there. Just, hey, ah, let's go, place. And they snap out of it and go lay down. What you've told them is, I need you to leave that alone and go lay down. With practice, you can condition a place where the dog takes space automatically. Practice makes perfect. It, as far as resource guard is concerned, it doesn't have a place. There, there's some places where punishment might be important, like dogs doing something that's gonna put itself at risk. Um, but in terms of resource guarding, you wanna make sure that you're just communicating and not removing the only warning you have to an altercation. Okay, uh, how do you teach place? Just... Bring her back, let me do all the stuff. The trainer should have gotten you squared away with. She's not reactive, so just get the obedience package. We just reduced the price and added another session to it. So it's like. I price gouged it for a long time because I didn't want to do obedience. I was only doing behavior. So I just made it like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Bring her back for some obedience and let's just get the heavy reps in. She'll place on the cot. Once she understands it, you come in, you place her on the cot, you go home. If she gets it, you place her there and now she understands it. Same for stay and we'll just get in a lot of reps so she gets it. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll continue with the sociability. At this point, I just don't see her being overly social. She's not hyper social. She's hyper stimulated. So she just gets the zoomies and goes crazy. But as you can tell, it really comes down to a lot of excitability. She doesn't know where to put it. Once I gave her a place to put it, you took that arousal and that excitability and you put it into drive. That now she has a focal point and a goal in mind. You're going to be fine. Okay. So there's no issues there. Only thing I'm worried about is the Frenchie and her getting along. Just breeds being breeds. I worry, especially the Frenchies. They're yeah. such antagonists. You know, Frida's not this 
good. Because they play like they're fighting. That's the other thing. Ten? Oh, yeah. Okay. So she's not spunk. She's not sprung. Spunk. What do you call it? Like a spring chicken? No. Okay. No. And she grew up with a bigger dog. Okay. Oscar was was 75 pounds. Okay. He was a mutt. Okay. He's a McNab. Watch for the, the dog advocating for something and just advocate for the dog and set the boundaries for the dog so that she doesn't respond to those postures and whatever's going on in the Frenchie. Otherwise, you leave it to the Frenchie to advocate for themselves and then there's potentially, it always leads to something terrible. Got it. That's good. And with the size disparity too, it's to totally not a good situation. I think we were trying to move it to Frida to advocate for herself, but with caution. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I can see her. She's a puppy now, but she's less and less of a puppy every day. That's the problem, right? Probably be crating her when we're not home, I imagine. Uh, are they ignoring each other when they like, snuggling sweet. up or? They're very sweet with each other. He's, she's so sweet with Frida. Good. Really, she's, she licks her ear. Stay close to it. Remove everything that creates contention. In a barren landscape where there's no toys and no bowl of food and not vying over your attention, it sets the stage for them to commit to each other. But as you saw, when I brought out a reward, it shifted the dog's priorities significantly. And the same is true for pure dog homes. They're fine and you remove all the balls and guess what? They'll start playing with each other because they got nothing else to do. So now play is an avenue and an outlet for each other, but you pile in other stuff that's non-participatory now they have an agenda and it has nothing to do with a pure dog in the home and now they're beefing over stuff that's so important to them. So remove all the toys, no buying your time with toys and gnawing on things, like it goes away. Anytime a toy comes out, it's participatory and I put you into a coma inside of 10 minutes with it, especially with her drive. Um, Wait, we explain that again. Okay, for example, there's tons of chew toys. She, she's younger, she just wants to chew. Sure. So, I, you know, if not, she'll just chew her body. Literally, she will just gnaw her. She body. likes to bite, but when I gave her an opportunity to bite the toy, uh -huh. see her now, it, it's antsiness. Without that, they're going to sit there and bitey. They like that sensation. It's self-soothing. But with it, she's cooler than a cucumber. It's such a breeding ground for misunderstanding. Let's say that thing that she, the plushie, her favorite plushie, she's decided is her favorite or her rope that she whips around. The Frenchie's trying to get to you. You just came through the front door. She's piled over her rope and there's a misunderstanding. She interprets the Frenchie as going near her while she's got her rope. And now she resource guards the rope. It can actually start from a misunderstanding. And one misunderstanding with her size and the weight disparity there, okay. it could end in tragedy. So the best case scenario is that you, if you want them to be social with one another and choose each other, then remove everything that is of value so that they can commit to each other in a healthy way, engage with one another. The more stuff you put in there, the less likely they're gonna to commit to each other, the more likely they're gonna to commit to the toys. Make it participatory. Like when I throw a ball and my, like they're, the, when I throw like a toy down, my Malinois is, what the fuck do you want me to do with that? And he brings it over to me, sees it as participation, right? There's no real fun just biting on a thing. You can, empty out their little tank with the fun, the games, the training, and then there's no need to keep the house a bait with all of the different stuff. Yeah. Watch your feet. Watch when you're at the couch and you're sitting down. Watch for Nova to be at your feet and for the Frenchie to come in from the kitchen from getting water. And watch for Nova to do that thing she did where she pops her head up, just like she's looking at the children, and just watches her as she walks across the room. If it looks tense, she's throwing tension to say, this is my spot. Like, don't come over here, this is where I get my ass scratched. There's that silent war happens in every household, but not a lot of people see it and pick up on it. But what ends up happening is, oh, the Frenchie sleeps over in the corner now. That's weird, she was on the couch before, wasn't she, sweetie? And what it was is the Frenchie being like, got it, <laughs> not messing with that. And where you have problems is the Frenchie doesn't pick up on it and just starts walking over to your feet. And now she cranks the dial and says, no, seriously, stay away. Look for also you to be cooking in the kitchen and for her to stand behind you. That is not a dog like waiting for scraps. Typically that's a dog that's cutting the path off for of the other dog mm -hmm. and trying to like, this is where I get scraps, don't mess around. So look for that subtlety. Okay. Anytime I give our small dog Frida attention, she comes in and just puts herself between the two of us. That's a subtle version of it. But I would tell her to. It's like a boxer's faint version of it. What do we do when she does that? She does it especially to oh. I want to teach these things as communal. Yeah. Both of you go and sit positions we make sure that treats are communal, something low value. When you sit for treats, we're good there. I pet you, and if you pop up, I put you back in a sit, and I pet that dog, and I show them that if pets are gonna happen, keep in your seated positions and don't rob Peter to pay Paul. So you mix it up and they go, got it, you don't want that, and this is what you want here. Practice makes perfect, okay. that's all.
Cool. What do we do next? Come back. Let's get a ton of obedience. Just grab a package and let's just get to it. The only reason I carry a package is because people can book out simultaneously. If you book one session, you're probably not going to see me for a month. So just when you purchase it, a calendar is going to pop up and just go once a week once and a just day. come up. Sure. Yeah. Try to dodge the heat. If it's 100 degrees, no go for her. Um, early morning. So I, sh I adjusted my schedule for the Antioch heat. So I start at 8 a.m. on the okay. weekend. So prime spot for her to crank her and for her yeah, to be yeah. okay. Yeah, that could work for us, Mark. Yeah, you can do the, the first thing. Cool. Right. Yeah, and Antioch's beautiful. It's so scenic. There's plenty of stuff to do up here. Nice. It's, it's Oakland, but not as not the, the food isn't as good. <laughs> There's no trade-off. It's not the best food in the world. <laughs> I love Oakland. I miss it. I used to live there a long time. I lived all over Oakland for years. It's my favorite spot. Yeah, I lived in uh, 22nd and Highland, the Murder Dubs, for a long time, like three years. Uh -huh. I lived in West Oakland. I lived near uh, everywhere, near Jack London. I lived in the lofts over on Fifth Street. Oh, yeah, great. yeah, I love it. Cra sketchy, but, sketchy, but the best food you could possibly yeah. get. Yeah, it's a cool city. Yeah, it's I love it. Always had really great potential and really yeah. crappy political leadership. Yeah. Before I got back into dog training, I was a corporate investigator. So I'd package cases against organized crime and work with local detectives and present cases for people that were going crazy. Wow. So I, I totally, yeah, Oakland was like a no-go. You had to show him a dead body and be like, see, he did, and then he, he's right here. He just did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a buddy who's, he, he works at uh, Oakland, and Oakland's so inundated with homicides that FBI has a satellite office there to help them with cases. He said they stopped using undercover cars because oftentimes, they, people would use it as cover in gun battles and not know it's a cop car and there's a cop inside of it. <laughs> so there's no more undercover cop units in there. Yeah, but let's get you back here. She's awesome, don't worry. Don't, and the only thing I want you to keep me abreast with is I want you to film the play. Okay. Any head scratchers, it looks good, send it. It looks weird, send it. Just let me see it so that I can break down that and make sure everything is copacetic. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool, okay. Awesome, thank you. You're yeah, so I welcome. I know. I know. <laughs> a full, a full <laughs> yeah. No, come on. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Okay. I know about me and you. Okay, here we gotta take this off. I like this leash too. Yeah, that's a good one. That's on Amazon. That's 17 bucks. It's super cheap. It's a company called Tough Pupper. Tough Pupper. Because it's light and oh, it's like grippy. It's honeycomb design so that you you can hold it with two fingers and pull it and it won't slip. Yeah. It's Teflon threading, uh, threading and aircraft aluminum. Best cheap leash you're ever going to get in your life. I know. T-U-F-F -F pupper, the LRT. Are going to stay here? Are you going to get that. Don't get the one. So you see this one here? You see how this shaft is to lock it in? Don't get this one. Oh, There's another wow. model where it doesn't have that. Don't get the oh. shaft. It, it wears out after a while. But this is one of the best leashes. This is He said, Nova. Oh, she's great. Going back to the pound just yet, Nova. <laughs> she loves people. Check. She she's over she's fine, but she's not aggressive towards dogs. Don't trust she's, her with cats and squirrels. <laughs> Sorry, Nova. Sweet toy's gotta stay here. And I just worry about Nova in her own environment. Like when we leave here. Get to get the cameras. Yeah, we're gonna get the cameras. I've never talked about as much product in this session. But <laughs> it, the Amazon stick-ups, they're called Amazon ring stick-ups, uh -huh. the ring cameras. They're security cameras, but they're like 44 bucks a pop. You plug them into the wall, hook them up to your phone. They're motion sensor. They have a really good speaker, so you can speak through them. Actually, I looked for a ton of cameras and settled on this one. Yeah. And it even has an alarm if someone something's in your house or you can hit the alarm and they'll sound. Who is your UK guy that you liked? Do you what do you look like? Bath? Let me put all the monsters away. Nova, you have fun? Is he redheaded? Nova, here. Nova, here. Nova. Here. Here. Ah. This guy. He's great. I love him. He's got that nice, warm, buttery voice. As a canine behaviorist, one of the things that's most important to me. I love that He's great. Soft and cuddly. The other dude owns the two. Oh, I can't even find this stuff. 
And it was, I'll send it to you. Yeah. He owns two Carne Corsos, and I've learned a lot from watching that guy. Just the behavior of the dog. I can see that, like, just right now when you were showing us stuff, I'm like, that is definitely a pit because we've owned pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the pursuit thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Pitties are all pursuit, all gas, no brakes. And even still, some of them may not necessarily be evil or aggressive. Mm -hmm. But once again, in that pursuit state, it's a, there's just only so many things you do yeah, running yeah, after yeah. something, right? We had a really so, nice little pit bull. She was about 55 pounds. She yeah. was white and brindle. She was so sweet and yeah. so loving. And she was great with other dogs. We lived in San Francisco by Dolores Park. Yeah. And she used to just run wild around the park and have all these friends. And then she got beat up by another dog. Twice. She was totally submissive. Realized, well, Genetics. She got some juice. Dormant. Got into a fight. After that, protein synthesis expressed. On. After that, we kept her. We loved her. We yeah. Keep her because we were like, it's just dog aggression. And but it was it was ten years yeah. of that. Oh my God, is the gate open? Did we leave the gate open? Yeah. Oh my God, that like fear of like yeah. her getting out, her attacking, because she could, she could kill. I mean, it was ten years of torture. People reel from that. They're like, not again. I can guarantee yeah. you that when I hear you say we want this to work out. It's 10 years of so much time, so much effort, so much worry, and not wanting it to replicate again yes. in a new dog. Yes. For sure. That's not this dog. You're oh. going to be okay. We're going to be okay, Nova. You're going to be okay. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be okay. Nova, you better be okay. Keep on keeping on. You got great intuition, all okay. the stuff that you're doing. Uh, be careful. Let me bring her back with it before you mess with toys. Okay. Let me get sure. that steering wheel and that brake a little better. Okay. Uh, and then you'll be fine. Okay, cool. Cool. This has been really great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm so happy. So much. Yeah, it was such a pleasure. So thanks for making the trip, too.